right, time for another draftphysics.com, debatephysics.com also, video presentation, Ugh. comments. Uh, <laughs> so again, they will never address anything stated in the video and in ever explain how, yes, they believe it takes 25 times the fuel to go five times as fast, and yes, they think levers don't tell you the truth they don't measure weight they don't you know they don't get it right they can't measure energy <laughs> yeah um, they can't see it uh, some kind of bullshit it's just over and over again so anyway so um, these comments are sort of mixed so I just figure yeah we'll just whatever all right to mr. draft I don't even know why people do that kind of stuff but whatever in the short video you made about a box in space, uh, have you considered that the box wouldn't move due to the difference in the change in the heat of the box as the kinetic energy is converted to thermal? There was nothing in the explanation that could possibly even create something like that. There's, it's all elastic, there is no waste, there is no friction, so the analogy. So it's just nonsense. So why would I consider it? It's a thought experiment, you fucked hard. They do this all the time in physics. Um, you know, there's just, you know, it's like me making the point that, look, an ideal lever will perfectly balance the energy of a recoiling gun and the bullet. And it perfectly works if you could make an ideal lever. That is, you could make a very, very large lever, very long, that didn't have any weight. So, I mean, this is just so not attacking, but showed this to someone and they tried to explain it this way. Therefore, energy is conserved and the box doesn't move. It's just, like I said, there's nothing in the thought experiment that allows the particles to be broken or to in some way transmit anything other than their momentum. They either stick or they reflect. They can't do anything else. That's the whole point of this argument is that the force works this way. <laughs> A force has to give all of its energy or some portion of its energy, but it can't do two things. It can't hit something, give it 100% of the energy, and then reflect. That's part of the nonsense that they believe. They actually think you can hit something with 100 momentums, that you can give the object you hit 200 momentums, and you'll get a reflection of 100. That's the whole point of the argument, is you can't make free motion. All motion counts. It doesn't matter what its direction is. Motion is energy in the universe. You have to count both the recoil of the gun and the bullet. They don't, in some way, cancel each other. They're both real energy. It's like the sun is shooting photons at us, and then the other side of the sun is still shooting photons at the rest of the universe. That's not unenergy. That doesn't cancel. The photons that you know give you cancer are not canceled by the photons going the other way. Yeah, you know, I don't want to bother drawing it, but I mean this is one of the basic premises, the distinctions between a rational theory of energy and an irrational one. Energy isn't about banging into something, making it move, okay, and this thing doesn't do anything. It's about the fact that you either absorb its energy and it goes with you, or it's reflected. But it can't do anything else on the elemental level. Those are the only two reactions. You either absorb the energy, all of it, or you reflect all of it. So for photons, for electrons, for protons, the universe they're existing in, there's no such thing as a partial event. It's either... You absorb it or you reflect it. Nothing else. Alright. I've addressed it, so I'm going to remove it. You look and talk and reason like a demented child, and you're a coward. <laughs> She's a pathetic, weaselly coward. What's his, his He has a real name. Uh, 
Sam Wilson. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you get what you deserve. Uh, please, future, find him and, you know, appropriately piss on his grave. I mean, this is just such crap. Why would anyone watch this channel of utter garbage? So, again... I've simulated charge. I've explained the two slit experiment without any wacky verse nonsense. No entanglement, no um, superpositions, no um, interference. Forces can't hit forces. Photons don't hit photons. They don't cancel each other. All right. You might have con <coughs> yourself convinced that these crackpot misguided theories, so again, you're the one with the crackpot theory that says it takes 25 times the fuel to spin something five times as fast. It's absolutely wrong. It's incorrect. It's not even close to the truth. It's just a complete fantasy, nonsense, fable, garbage. And here you are defending it. So who's the jackass? You're sitting here defending a theory that you know has a big fucking problem. Because you know it doesn't work. Because you know it doesn't happen. Okay. <clears throat> but those of us with a brain can laugh hysterically. So you'll do it all the way to the idiot house. I'm just saying. You're only showing that you didn't even have enough integrity to pay any attention to the argument. I mean... What's the future going to say? You know, it'll look at this and say, well, he sat there and said right to them, 25 times the fuel to spin something five times as fast? That's idiotic. Why the fuck did they defend that? There's no evidence of it. There's no evidence of seven times. There's no evidence of 10 times. There's no evidence of 13 times. Why the fuck are you defending this nonsense physics? It's garbage. It's nonsense. The lever shows you that two, you know, completely different things equal each other. It makes it kind of obvious. There's no tricks here, right? Where where could the trick be? It's a fucking stick. And where's the trick? And the stick tells you this equals this, all right? And that that stick tells you a completely different number than your wacky theory. And here you are defending it, and calling somebody else a name. What the fuck? I mean, you're pathetic. So he's Wild Oscar. 416. Get what you deserve, fucker. All right. Have you ever attempted to figure out the ratio of the number of <coughs> photons? So again, photons are composite objects. So you, you know, <coughs> quantons might be the right terminology. <laughs> Okay, I mean, the gravity, the magnetism, the, f the photons are all made out of the same thing. We're just talking about a pattern in a field of these little bits of energy quanta. <clears throat> and the number of electrons, protons in a given space. Now, the, the, dust, the, this, you know, the density is an interesting subject, but see, that's the limitations of simulations. You know, you can do 10,000 of these little things and you can put, you know, you can get these numbers, but, you know, I would argue that the density is high and most of it is very even and it's only a slight percentage of it that is affected by even a sun being in a local area. So, yeah, it's really a high density of force but I don't know what the number would be. <clears throat> no, I haven't, I guess, attempted to figure out the ratio because I just don't, haven't had the time yet. Uh, you know, very busy. Got a lot to do. Uh, so anyway, delete that. We're done with that too. I mean, it's not, you know, time will tell. I'm just saying the simulation works better with more force in it. So I'm just saying it's kind of obvious it's probably a pretty dense force. All right. How do you think the difference in kinetic energy should be visible in the lever? I'm saying it shouldn't be because it doesn't exist. What I'm saying is, is if you're saying energy is kinetic energy, then why doesn't levers agree with you? You're, you're saying the kinetic energy says something has twice the energy. 
or in the case of my example, four times the energy. You're saying it has it. So why doesn't the lever say it has it? And that's the question you won't answer. So, so I'm saying if your energy can't be visualized, if it can't do work, if it can't create torque on the lever, if it can't make something, if it can't show itself, you know, like in the ballistic pendulum, I mean, the only way you can see it is if you did something ludicrous, which is make free momentum. So if the ballistic pendulum moved with, you know, say, only lost 98% of the kinetic energy. So if the ballistic pendulum only lost 98% of the kinetic energy, then the ballistic pendulum would have more momentum than the object that hit it, the bullet. So you would have made free momentum. And obviously, if it went down to zero, uh, you know, if you conserved all of the kinetic energy, it would be a monstrous amount of momentum you would make for free. Uh, you see, you just, there's no response to these arguments. They just run away, okay, and talk some other shit. Uh, what do you think kinetic energy means? I have absolutely no idea. It's nonsense. That's what it means to me. I told you in every way possible. I don't even know why you would square a velocity. It can't make any sense in a dimensional universe. You can't understand. There's no way. A meter, a square meter, you can understand. A cubed meter, you could understand. Well, how do you understand a squared velocity? Where, how could that manifest in the universe in any way? You can't create an area of velocity. I mean, it's nonsense. All right, velocity does not have dimensionality. What? Who said this? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's me saying it's a one-dimensional thing. You can't have dimensions of velocity. Uh, it's a one-dimensional thing of velocity. So, okay, now I get why we can't square velocity. Thanks. The reason why you can't square the velocity is because you have no reason to. Because there's no physical evidence ever compiled demonstrating the existence of any kind of squared velocity. They never even measured the weight on a spring of four pounds dropped one foot and then one pound dropped four feet. They've never even done that experiment. And you're sitting here defending it fuck tard. I mean, I imagine this is some sort of sarcasm. This, where is your evidence, okay? Just show me the 25 times the fuel to spin something five times as fast and all of this grief is over. We're done. We don't have to argue anymore because you've actually shown a piece of evidence that makes some sense. Show the Mythbusters crashing cars and getting the results you predict because they didn't get them. Now, so you need somebody to do the experiment where they get the results you predicted. Fuck, you're such a cunt. Anyway. So, high IQ land. All right, this is the Chris Logan guy who has a nut, frankly. So, these people think because somebody has a high IQ, they must not be crazy or stupid or psychotic. When, nope, that's not the rule. Uh, really now, so if someone doesn't grasp his content, would that make you the tard? If someone? What would someone have to do with me? So you can't even get the grammatical concept that I can't be <laughs> something, a someone can't be the subject of your sentence and then you talk about me randomly out of no context, so that's kind of silly. LOL, the irony. Yeah, obviously the irony of a poorly written, you know, statement making some sort of empty argument that somehow rejecting his content means you don't understand it. You know, I could watch a retard eating poo and I don't really, you know, frankly, it's not going to be because I don't understand it that I don't do it. Oh, fuck. So here's bulb ahead again. Um, you didn't get my free energy argument. Yeah, I did. You fucking bastard. I mean, I went to the trouble of drawing it. 
I explained that there's two, at least two or three experiments that demonstrate it as an absolute fact that, yeah, it is more energy. Now the question is, can you collect it? I, I mean, it's under. I, I mean, I'll just give you, you know, we'll just do it again just to point out, why should I have to do this? I mean, I really shouldn't have to redo the argument I just did. So you're just being so obnoxious. So I pointed out that if you do what Galileo did, which is slow down the fall of an object, all right, you know, so you could drop it straight down, or you could roll it down a ramp, and you'll get the same, this, mv, will equal this, in this direction, the mv. So those two things will be equal. Now, I'm not, I, I haven't seen anybody test this, because the other catch is, the other thing I didn't mention, was you're also going to end up with angular rotation. This isn't going to rotate. This one is. And so you have to account for the fact you also have energy caught up in the angular uh, momentum, the rolling energy. So that's another portion of energy. Now whether that is a plus to this or whether that makes this, to, you know, the total MV here is including the angular rotation, but it doesn't matter for the purpose of what we're saying here. So let's just assume these two things are equal. Um, the fact is just the friction alone. That's all I need. All I need to do is for us to agree, well, yes, there is friction. There will be energy going into the ground. So obviously this experiment has more energy in it than this experiment. Obviously because I've heated the ramp. So I'm, you know, so I'm explaining to you that it's just a fact that it happens. Now whether you can make a perpetual motion machine out of this, well, that's another question, right? And we're back to this same freaking argument. You have two choices here and they both suck. So there's no, you know, there's really no point in making this argument. I could lift one object, put it on a scale, the, the, the scale reads uh, a certain amount of uh, change in the spring, right? So we just do that box as the amount. And then I could just do it the same exact action and put another ball on there, and it doubles. So that's a fact. Scales work. One pound, two pounds, three pounds, it's all the same amount of distance on the scale. It's all in increments right there in front of your face. And your argument is, you know, is that somehow this was one unit of energy and somehow this added three units of energy. Same exact action. So how could this be worth three more units of energy? Twice the compression of the spring can't be four units of energy. It's only two units of energy. All right. So here's the, the paradox uh, that, you know, he's throwing at me. Um, so if I could, all right, so you can shoot an object at a high velocity, put it four times the height. Okay, so it's twice the velocity. And then I could drop it from that higher height in increments. So I'd have to have like a staircase or something, right? And I drop it one unit of distance. Now the trick is I need to drop a two mass at the same time. So if I want to get the double the velocity, that is twice the compression of the spring, I can't drop the same pound on the spring. I need to drop two of them at the same time. So somehow I have to create this experiment in some duality thingy where I have two of these experiments running. So then I can drop two balls, okay, one unit of distance. Right? So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna drop two mass, one unit, which will be one unit of time, all right, and that will produce the same spring compression as dropping the one mass four units of distance, or vice versa shooting it. And obviously those two things, you know, you're saying I only did, I only did two units of distance here, and I did four units of distance here, so I should be able to do the four units and then get twice as much out of it somehow. 
but the point is is that the how is the problem right because you somehow have to move these objects to make them do what you want them to do and then you have to collect the energy with mechanisms that aren't 100 percent efficient so we know springs are like 75 80 percent it's not that great so there's lots of uh, reasons why you can't do it with the hardware we have whether it's theoretically possible, like in space or something, I just can't say for sure. But I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with it. I'm just saying that your paradox is just as bad. So there's no point in arguing over, you know, this. I don't think this subject is going to be very fruitful. I'm just pointing out that obviously there's, it's, diff, it's harder to move something fast than it is to move something slow. So that you even see in light and photons and the fact that you know it's harder to make it ultraviolet light and it's harder to make x-rays and it's harder to make these things so the fact that it's more difficult all right is also revealed here in that it's hard to convert slow actions into a fast action now the lever does it but again we don't have the perfect lever so again what's the losses on the lever and so the same issue comes up. If I drop the two mass, okay, going one velocity here, all right, and then I have the one mass, two distances, on the other side of the lever, theoretically, I should get twice the velocity, and it should go four times the distance. So, yeah, the lever says it's possible, but is it efficient enough to be able to do it? And can I engineer it so these things actually put their energy onto the lever. Like I said, I have to make some sort of weird, I don't know, staircase thing, and I have to have two of them hit at the same time. Uh, you know, so it's not that simple. But yeah, that's what I'm arguing. But I'm arguing it from the fact that <laughs> Galileo already proved it, that it happens. It already, we already know it, already know it happens. You, and we know it from lifting things for fucks. You know, it's almost like, I, do I really have to say it? If I lift this thing slowly, I'm going to use more energy than if I lift it quickly. And I shouldn't have to say that to you, right? That shouldn't be a subject for argument, should it? No. All right. So anyway, I got your argument. I mean, arguing perpetual motion devices just doesn't seem like, okay, that's a really good use of our time. I don't think so. All right. Um, you didn't get my free energy argument. If you drop an object from one meter, collect the energy into a spring. So, again, the springs aren't that efficient. But anyway, and then drop it again from one meter. Well, you can't do that. So you have to drop both of them at the same time. Um, so you double the mass and that way they both hit the spring at the same time and then you'll get the two pound weight and you'll get the full you can't drop one pound lock it and then somehow drop another pound and get the you can't create <laughs> you can't create energy it has to be in the same time you can't do it at different times energy is time dependent all right, and collect the energy into a spring. How much energy is that in comparison to dropping the same object two meters? Well, you'd be dropping it four, but whatever. It seems that you say it is more energy. I'm saying gravity is a time-dependent force. So the slower, okay, you collect the gravity, that is you create something to slow down how fast something falls, you can collect more energy from that system, just as I illustrated. And that's exactly what a ramp does. It collects more gravity, but it wastes it on friction. So my question is, why couldn't that energy from the two one meter drops be used to launch an object higher than two meters? Well, I'm saying to you, it probably could if it, we lived in a place where there was ideal tools. But it can't in this world. 
Another point about guns and bullets. I posted this before, but my comment was deleted. Possibly by YouTube. Well, I doubt it, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, I might have deleted it. I usually, I don't delete without reading, but anyway. Let's say we have a 5.5, 5, well, no, that's not true. I mean, I have started to just delete the, the absolute shit comments. Let's say we have a 0.5 kilogram handgun. Uh, you know, th these thought experiments are such a pain in the ass. I mean, can't any of you people, can't you find one person on the internet who can make videos and then you could explain to him how to make the video? Like, could you draw a picture of a gun and can you do this and you can do that? I mean, you don't see how this is an insane waste of time where I have to sit there and waste all this time building and constructing your model out of these silly Chinese instructions. Oh, fuck. All right, a half kilogram handgun. It fires a bullet weighing eight grams traveling. Oh, fuck you in this. Oh, I'm supposed to do this in my head. Oh, okay. By doing this simple momentum calculation, we know that the gun recoil speed is 5.44 meters per second. What are you basing that on? So you're saying it's equal to the bullet's momentum. That's what you've concluded. You could glue some bullet-shaped objects to a 5.5 liter container and let it drop 1.5 meters to your head what the fuck is this are you really just trying to deliberately waste time is that what you're doing this corresponds to the five kilograms of mass uh, of the velocity it would hurt but it would not go through your skull so again you don't understand what surface area is <laughs> And you don't know what a pointed arrow is? So the fact that a pointy arrow goes into something better than a dull arrow means the pointy arrow has more energy. I mean, fuck you. All right. Anyway, uh, what, what, why? It only has only a moderate momentum, and that can't be stopped fairly quickly in human head. So again, you keep talking about what kind of substance you're going to use to test things with. And you're going to say to me that it doesn't, velocity doesn't matter. Human heads absorb energy regardless of the velocity the same. They don't fracture. You, you can't break them like a piece of wood by hitting them quickly. There's no karate and principles involved. I mean, this is just such crap. I've been over this so many fucking goddamn times. There's two factors here. Surface area first. I mean, obviously, if all the force is in one tiny spot, that's going to be a lot rougher on the matter that it's hitting. And then the second argument is, yeah, velocity matters. Velocity can cause, objects have to absorb the energy. And I even brought up a piece of steel. It does it at the speed of sound in steel, which is, I don't know, five times the speed of sound in air, but whatever, it doesn't matter, a couple of thousand miles an hour. Anyway, yeah, and if you try to put the energy in faster than that, it can't do it. The steel gets hot, it starts to break down, it does things. So that's the trick of it. So yeah, speed can disrupt matter better. It doesn't mean it has more energy, it just means that it's going to cause the structure to fall apart easier. Fast things can break the structure. It doesn't mean they have more energy. It's like a high frequency sound breaking a glass. It's not that it has all this huge, gigantic amount of energy. It's the way it's, it's fucking imposing the energy. Oh, you people are just so fucking stupid. I didn't understand your response to my train argument. You don't understand anything, so it's no point. My argument had nothing to do with gravity. What the fuck did it have to do with then? I don't know. I don't know why it would have anything to do with gravity either. I mean, if I drop a fucking weight on a car, you can understand that part has something to do with gravity, right? So I have a car moving, and I drop a weight on it. You can understand that I didn't use any of this motion to smash the two things together, did I? I don't have to use any of this velocity to make them stick if I drop it in gravity, right? 
it has a new momentum, a new energy. I'm adding energy to the system in the sense that, yes, there's energy going down. It doesn't have to have anything to do with the energy going this way. So obviously I could drop a weight in gravity, okay? And there's no way the collision is going to use this motion. Oh, fuck you. I just tried to explain why forcing the trains to stick together consumes kinetic energy it says you so again you just keep saying the same fucking shit that you have zero evidence for so you have never put a thermometer on anything you're never measured any of it you have zero fucking physical evidence and you just keep telling me i gotta believe i have to believe why do i have to believe in your invisible man shit you just claim there's an invisible man, and well, you can't see him, and you can't, you, know, you can't do fingerprints, and you can't do uh, footprints, and you can't do it. You have zero fucking evidence. So until okay, I'm just going to tell you, you can't. You know, there's no point in you posting. Post evidence or fuck off. Show me 25 times the fuel to go five times as fast. Show me one fucking piece of evidence demonstrating kinetic energy is real or just fuck off. I mean, it's just a waste of time. They just sit there and recite out of the book. There's absolutely nothing here. There's just nothing. It's just this recital of this gobbledygook, blah, 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 says them. And there's no evidence. <sighs> Dipo Margie. So this guy says he's a physicist, which is such a fucking lie. <laughs> Here's where the kinetic energy comes from. So again, you're just a liar. I know where it comes from. Leibniz. OK, um, mostly. I mean, the fact is, Huygens did say it in some obscure paper. He did write the words and be squared. Uh, but Leibniz was the guy who pushed this shit. All right. It's defined in classical. So this word classical physics means absolutely it's just some shot they take at the past, like somehow they did something wrong when no, you did something wrong, retards. You're the ones that broke physics. They didn't break it. You broke it. All right. It's defined as force times distance. So again, not by Newton it isn't. Uh, so we add up um, integrate E equals F dx. So what is this nonsense? What does this have to do with reality? Oh, that's right. Absolutely nothing. Your claim that this is the reality when that's not what Newton wrote now, again, I'm not going to go over it and over it. I mean, I've been over it so many fucking times. I mean, Newton's clearly told you it's just a change in the momentum. That's what the second law says. Right underneath the second law. Twice the force, twice the velocity. Three times the force, three times the velocity. He shouldn't have never even said proportional to the energy, you know, the force imposed. He should have just said it's directly equal. Force is momentum. That's what the second law should say. Uh, not a particularly hard calculation. So it's not even a calculation. This isn't a calculation, you fucktard. You putting equal signs between two pieces of garbage is somehow a calculation? You didn't calculate anything. Uh, yet here you keep, I mean, <laughs> it's like saying one second times one second is second squared. Uh, no, it isn't. It's one second. All right, you can't do that calculation correctly. Yet here you keep ranting about nonsense about it, among other things. And you keep lying and evading because that's all you have. So show a piece of evidence. Show it taking 25 times the fuel to spin something five times as fast. Show it taking seven times the fuel or even nine times the fuel. Show some indication that the horseshit you are propagandizing for has some connection to reality because you have no physical evidence. Right. Yes, it is a definition. Yeah, well, it's certainly not a calculation. Um, and there's really, you know, this force times distance obviously doesn't mean anything, right? Because in space, twice the velocity is twice the distance. It's not four times the distance in space. Yeah. He does not agree with the definition. 
Well, I think it's idiotic when you know forces are applied over time, so you know they have to be time dependent. All right. It has to be part of the equation, it has to have the time component in it. <sighs> Fuck, I think. I think he wants, this isn't about anybody wanting something, you fucking moron. All right, I, what I have done is demonstrated the two-slit experiment as described by all the physicists is absolutely a lie and nonsense. It doesn't have anything to do with reality. An on-off pattern does not automatically mean interference. It's the simplest pattern in the universe. I mean, you people are just so fucking Catholic. I mean, you're just such fucking Muslims. You, you just can't, you know, you, you're sitting here propagandizing for theories you have no evidence. You have no fucking evidence. And you lie about the evidence that exists, talking about detector experiments and how the electron experiment, the same thing as a two-slit experiment, when it's not even close to the same thing. Anyway, I want energy to, buy, to be defined to be impulse. Obviously, I can't make it any clearer. I want exactly what Newton wrote. Force equals the change in your momentum over a unit of time, whatever time you want to use. One second, one mile, one year, one mile. One year, one month, it doesn't matter what you use. And then you'll have a rate. And if you want the net, well, then the net time would be just one unit of time. So it's just the change in the momentum. The force equals the change in the momentum. The force is essentially just momentum. You're adding it or subtracting it. All right, anyway, he thinks that if the force is applied at a faster speed and hence in less time for the same distance. So again, what is this, this obsession with distance? <laughs> it's just idiotic. There's all kinds of examples where distance aren't going to help you. So again, if something's moving towards the Earth into gravity, if something's moving faster than 9.8 meters per second, you can sort of understand that it's already kind of <laughs> escaping, okay, the force. Um, and certainly you could understand that if it's not even in the gravity for a second, it can't gain any gravitational potential from the experience. And obviously, I've done this one so many times. I mean, you're going to fly by the moon. All right, there's an average gravity. So let's just say the average is 9.8. If I zoom past really, really quickly, I'm barely even bent because I wasn't in the field of gravity. I wasn't in the pressure very long. Very little paint got on me, so to speak. It's a paint sprayer. Very little paint got on me. And the slower I go, the more paint, the more... I'm oppressed by the force the more I collect, period. It's not that complicated at all. all right. Is applied to the faster speed and hence less time for the same distance. Then it should not add the same amount of energy as going at the slower speed to reach the same distance in a longer time. Well, again, I'm just going to make the thin ice argument. Yeah, you can slide across thin ice and uh, essentially defeat gravity. You're extending the amount of surface you're applying the gravitational force to. So you're making, you're putting the same pressure over a much larger surface and therefore defeating the cracking of the ice. He thinks this is a fallacy for both cases to add the same amount of energy, but it's not since energy is defined to be force times distance and not force times time. So again, defined by who? Uh, and through what evidence? And I'd argue none. All right. uh, so then the retarded theoretical physics uh, physicist says, the liar, uh, well, well, if that's the case, he's on a long, hard path of learning and discovering. So these lying, pathetic, lying sacks of shit. How many fucking times do I have to say it? 25 times the fuel to spin something five times as fast. Just show me, fucker. That's your fucking asshole physics. Your asshole physics says that's a fact. You don't have a shred of evidence. And you're calling yourself scientists? I mean, you can't get more unscientific than to show no evidence for a bold claim like that. 
It is unfortunate for him that the laws of nature are invariant under disagreement. Whatever that, what is that? That's not even a sentence of any kind of reason. Invariant under disagreement. What does that mean? It doesn't. I can't. I can't make it anything. The laws are invariant. Well, I guess a law can't be variant, can it? I mean, how do you have a variant law? So you can't even make sense out of this gibberish. Oh, these people are so full of shit. Right. <sighs> Let's see. For a rocket shooting springs out of the back of it. So I don't know what they, where this guy was going. Uh, this is a kind of an old video a year ago, more than a year ago. All right. Um... So anyway, some idea that you could shoot springs, you know, compress a spring and then shoot the spring out of the back end of something. Well, obviously you can't do it because the spring doesn't lose any energy to pushing anything. So the spring obviously will just reflect and hit you again and it just push you this way and then it push you back this way. So you're not going to go anywhere. Uh, let's see, what is the springs pushing against to push the rocket? Uh, obviously, it's not pushing against anything, and so, but the point is, it doesn't release anything either. If I throw something out of a spaceship and there's a string tied to it and <laughs> it comes back to me, well, that's not going to work. I can't throw a yo yo out the side of the ship and get anywhere. Yo yos don't work. Okay, every spring I've seen releases its free space expands to the limits while they continue to fall under. So, so this is a spring that's not attached to anything. So he's talking about slinkies and stuff. Yeah, that's not the subject. We're talking about can you make thrust. Uh, and this is a, a spring decompressing in gravity, which is also not the subject. All right. The fall rate is not affected by it being compressed or uncompressed. Uh, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, releasing or already released. It just falls. But you don't see it. <laughs> right? Because the fact is it's pushing up. So it doesn't look like it's going anywhere as it expands. Okay, cheers. Great video, by the way. You have got me thinking. Very new to your content. All right, well, I don't know how. I'm just trying to guess at what the subject matter is. So when you comment a year and a half after a video was made, a year after a video was made, you probably should be a little more explicit about actually what was argued in the video. But whatever. All right, well, maybe I'll leave that one. But I'm not sure it's going to do anybody any good. Anyway, a couple of questions and some analogies used. Eh, fuck you. For orbits and gravity, so I, there's very few conversations I have about orbits because orbits are kind of a contrivance. Orbits are not easy. Orbits, it isn't what something naturally does. It just fall into an orbit. It just doesn't happen. You always have to hit something and change its velocity for it to get into an orbit. It can't maneuver towards an object. You can't come from the outside and come towards a gravitational thing and fall into an orbit naturally. You have to change your velocity. For orbit, uh, orbits and gravity, for orbits and gravity being as a river, Obviously, an orbit has nothing to do with a river. Okay, so the river part just has to do with the pressure coming from the outside towards the center of the mass. And so the water is flowing straight line all the way around the circumference. It's like photons leaving a light bulb. It's just in reverse. I've said that so many times. An object at 10 meters will fall at in t time same object fired at some speed horizontal starting at 10 meters will still fall in t
there's no case where you can do that though right especially in an orbit you can't shoot something this way and have this this velocity it's obviously got a f <laughs> the, the rate at which they move towards the earth is going to be the same but obviously one of them is going to do it over a gigantic amount of distance so it's a bend in its path as pointed out I mean this isn't complicated right that's not complicated faster I go this way the less time I'm going to be in the force I can't be in the force the same amount of time if I'm moving away from the object I have to stay connected to the object to be falling at the same rate that's why orbits work is because orbits are matching the rate at which you're falling to the rate at which you're leaving the object so that rate equals the rate you're falling at so the it ends up being a sustainable curve but if I have the same amount of time, okay, it's going to get away. Using your analogy of a river, in order to cross the river, energy must be expended against the river to hit the same spot directly across. No, you just start upstream and the river on the other side. Or going back to gravity, the mountain altitude against the force what the fuck is this energy must be extended at a constant rate equal to it no no um, I just don't know what to say to this I mean obviously your path is going to be longer so you're going to have to do more work because your path is longer so if you want to cross the river and hit a spot yeah, you have to do more work because you're really changing your path. You're going upstream, the river's pushing you down. You go upstream, the river pushes, you know, that kind of thing. All right. Oh, God. I do hate you people. Anyway, for the rocket shooting springs, okay, we did that. Uh, so you're saying that when an object falls in gravity, yes, I'm saying it, okay, so we already did this comment earlier, and I have to post a link to the previous video here, I guess. All right, I don't think there's anything else. Let's just see if the weasel has responded to the I'll pay you to bait to debate. No, so nothing from McToon, the coward. No. <sighs> Oh, it just sucks on this planet of assholes and liars. Idiots, assholes, and liars. Liars, liars, liars. Okay. I mean, if you had any integrity, you admit, if I was proposing a theory, you know, I was saying something like 25 times the fuel to go five times as fast. I mean, it's just ludicrous. But yeah, I was saying it. You would expect me to produce evidence. You wouldn't say, oh, yeah, no, we'll take a buy on that. You don't have to produce any evidence. We'll just believe you. I mean, you're such hypocrites. You know, your team doesn't have to produce any evidence at all, and everybody else has to produce minutiae, you know, and just tons and tons, and every little detail, and every little I has to be dotted, but you don't have to do a goddamn thing. Because you're fucking Muslims. You're no better than Muslims. Arrogant religious fucktards. Ugh. 